on package index. Um, it's a Python packaging system that allows people to distribute their programs and libraries in a standard format that makes it easier, easy to install and use them. So my first thing I did, I got drunk one night and wanted to do this, and I made an app called Tese, right? So if you come over to uh, I'm over here, and I did a fresh virtual environment, I say pip install Tese, and then from the command line I say Tese. It gives you a random uh, Tim McGraw lyric from Taylor Swift. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I had dreams of doing it bigger, but I did one song. like, all right, I'm done with this. Um, so anybody can do this is the point. Um, so why does it matter? Um, Python is known for the way it says batteries included. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do out of the box. But the number of third-party packages is much larger than the number of standard library packages and kind of understanding how they are used, found, and created seems to be foundational for me. Especially as a person just learning Python, being a Java developer so long, like wondering how the hell the magic happened, really was interesting for me. Um, and then every, I think everybody's probably seen this XKCD comment. Um, basically, it's uh, the Python XKCD. The guy said, how do you do this? He's like, I am poor at anti-gravity. And the next thing you know, the dude's flying. And I thought that was really cool, because Python, uh, like the, again, Hello world of Python is print. Hello world with Java and every other language. It's a bunch of, you know, there's like maybe eight to ten lines where Python is just one. So the prerequisite to this is basically your minimum Python uh, setup. Uh, I said an idea. So the hardest thing I ever have with anything is just coming up with a freaking idea. The technology is so easy. Um, that's why Tese, what I said, was just uh, I was drinking like, oh, I'll just do a stupid random number thing and pick a lyric out of a, uh, an array. So Python pip virtual environment wrapper. Um, and then the steps. So it's really easy. Um, I Google searched how to create a PyPy package. I mean, believe it or not, PyPI. Um, and there's this guy, Peter Downs co Post, who, uh, who showed me how to do it. Um, I, uh, it's linked there, but we'll get back to that. Um, so basically, he goes through four steps. It's the PyPI registration, the project layout, setting up your setup.py, uploading it, and then, of course, you profit. So whatever you're making after that, everybody is available. So the PyPy registration is terribly simple. You go to the PyPI website, and I keep on saying PyPy, PyPI website, and just fill in every other freaking form in the world, and then you get a username and password, um, and then you set up a .pyPIRC file. This is not my information, but I have this on my computer in my, uh, my, uh, like in my home directory. So like down here, I have one of these with my specific credentials. Um, and that's pretty much all it takes to start a, uh, start doing some damage. Um, the project layout, your standard project layout, right? So you have your top level package or your, um, your directory, then your actual first Python package. Uh, I created a test directory because if you're not writing tests and it's 2016, you can just basically jump off a cliff right now. Um, the test is stupid simple, but you know, you have a setup, config, your normal GitHub stuff from there on. Um, the setup.py, this is complicated. Um, this is on GitHub, though, so if you want to use this as an example, um, all the stuff's here. The, uh, the most important parts are uh, this console's down here, the script, you're basically your entry point. So what we're going to see is that we'll type in hello world on the console, and it'll print out what we have in our package. Um, I include a pi test as an install requires. I'm looking at that now. I think that can be a test requires. So uh, this could maybe use a little bit of refinement. Bless you. Um, and then we upload it. The upload is so simple. Um, it's like uh, two lines. You register, and then you upload your distribution. It's, uh, again, if, if anybody sees the Zoolander, yep. Uh, finally, profit, right? There we go. Phase one, phase two. We already got phase one and two done, and now we're going to profit. OK. So here's an example. I made a uh, GitHub repository. And here's the output of it, right? Um, we'll look at that repository real quick here in a little bit. Um, just terribly simple. From that setup of having the, the correct project, the create setup.py file, running the few, uh, few, few commands. I think I actually just in pip install it. I don't have the other one. But we're going to go through it real quick. Um, and then let's, let's do a demo. So um, right now, if we look at... Hi Ohio test. I actually already, um, if we said pip, did I get spell right? Pip three. See, I have um, my package archetype, O2. And if I say from the command line, I say hello world. 
I get the word hello world, right? This is on PyPy. Anybody can download this now. Um, if you had a internal, um, uh, like a artifactory type thing for your Python, you could do that. I don't know. I'm sure they have PyPI servers that you can uh, run for your company if you know you're not really wanting to open source all your work. Some bosses don't like that, um, even though it's 2016 still. Um, so I have a little bit of updates I'm going to do. So I updated a couple files. Uh, you have to update the version. Um, and if we go to this guy, uh, what do I call it? Uh, oh, package archetype. You have to say git diff. You can see the differences. The only thing I changed is, I, I, this is actually the fourth one I did because I was testing it before I got here. A little nervous. Um, but I changed this, so it says, I'll say demo-2. I updated the version from being 0.3 to 0.4. And... Um, the download URL. So this is in the setup.py. This is my actual uh, project itself. So we have those changes. And now if I clear, and I say Python. Right here, that one command that was so simple. The other one was register. I'm already registered. I want to push another update. Push it. I don't know if people can see that very well. Um, it's submitting, and you get a 200. It's OK. So we come over here. Um, oh, not this one. Come over here, and we are in our test queue, so I'll clear now. I'll say uh, pip install, what do I call it, package archetype, which I was su surprised that the word uh, archetype was in taken. There we go. So downloading, you see point 0.4 at the very top over here. And when I say hello world on the command line now, uh, oh, we have an update. So it's that simple. Um, this is what really got me with Python right now, is that in Java, I actually, after doing this, like, this has got to be easy to do this in Java, too. I went to the Maven central repository. Turns out it's not. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, once I do it once, it'd be just as simple, but having one guy's blog post take you through, like, the five or six steps and actually do it, and all of a sudden people can get to. Now I have two packages on PyPI. Um, so let's take a, maybe a, a show of hands. Who has published anything to PyPI before? Two, three? in the room. So that makes us three developers better than everybody else, some would say. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about anybody else, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's stupid simple, too. That's why I said the hardest thing for me is just trying to figure out the idea. So I have two irrelevant packages. I'm sure you guys have something more, uh, a little bit more than a hello world, maybe. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's, that was that, it's that simple. So we can make a code change. We can push as many updates as you want. So if you have something valuable that you want to share with the world, just do it real quick. Um, so now, that's pretty quick. Does anybody have any questions? Oh. Pi P I. Um. <laughs> um. So what I uh, I imagine is that um, you just have to find a um, distribution. Platform, which are you going to say something, Andrew? Yeah. So you just need to install the distribution. Yeah, and then at that point, instead of um, I would imagine you set up that pie. You probably say, "Hey, this is my order." I'm just thinking from the uh, the Java world and your uh, your Maven files. You have like, "Hey, this is my." order in which I'm going to try to look for my, my packages. If I can't find it here, go to the next one and so forth. So um, maybe that'll be talk at Pi Ohio 2 um, for me next year. Um, but yeah. Um, you want to say something? It's a fantastic question. Um, uh, he was wondering if the process is exactly the same if you have non-Python dependencies. And my first thought, I think, is yes, because if you look at uh, when you do the uh, distribution, I'm trying to pull up uh, and find it real quick, my uh, project. Um, it actually, oh, I'm not moving over there. Oh, it's because I'm full screen. I'm struggling here. Uh, it won't let me bring my finder up on this window over here. But, um, Maybe I could do the command line. So if we say ls, 
If you look like the right here where it says pack a package a archetype egg info, I believe it takes all that stuff in the in the disk too. So it takes up all your stuff in your project, combines them into a single thing that you can pull down. Um, whether or not that's going to make your project larger and maybe make some people angry because you're putting in high resolution pictures, who knows? Or whatever your third party dependencies are. Any other questions? Oh man, this went fast. I still got a still got eight minutes. Um, what do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> do it again? Okay. All right. Uh, again, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's my contact information. I think.